morning, Art Hostage here, and we're going to do another episode. Right, now this episode is coincides with the anniversary of 11 years ago, right, when Osama Bin Laden was killed by SEAL Team 6. Okay, right, and it started off, right, at 7.16 UK time, right, 12.16 AM on May the 2nd, right, um, Eastern Standard Time in the US, right, and President Obama is in the White House and he comes up to the podium, right, now I've got it all on, ain't I, right, I've got all the windows open, right, White House, um, Pentagon and all this carry on, right, and then this comes on, right, now you've got to remember, right, as I told you before in the other um, podcast, right, about Madonna and I was her Josh, right, well, she was in Pakistan, Right, working with an N <coughs> working with an NGO. Okay, right, we all know what that means, right? And we'll go into that in a minute, right? Well, you can imagine, right? I know she's in Pakistan, right? And then all of a sudden, this goes down, right? Seven o'clock in the morning, right? You know me, Mr. Warrior, right? I'm panicking after this. But listen to this, right? It's nine minutes long, and I think it's worth listening to, right? Because it was the moment that President Obama announced um, the death of uh, Osama bin Laden. Good evening. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda, and a terrorist who's responsible for the murder of thousands of innocent men, women, and children. It was nearly 10 years ago that a bright September day was darkened by the worst attack on the American people in our history. The images of 9-11 are seared into our national memory. Hijacked planes cutting through a cloudless September sky, the Twin Towers collapsing to the ground, black smoke billowing up from the Pentagon, the wreckage of Flight 93 in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where the actions of heroic citizens saved even more heartbreak and destruction. And yet we know that the worst images are those that were unseen to the world. The empty seat at the dinner table, children who were forced to grow up without their mother or their father, parents who would never know the feeling of their child's embrace. Nearly 3,000 citizens taken from us, leaving a gaping hole in our hearts. On September 11th, 2001, in our time of grief, the American people came together. We offered our neighbors a hand, and we offered the wounded our blood. We reaffirmed our ties to each other and our love of community and country. On that day, no matter where we came from, what God we prayed to, or what race or ethnicity we were, we were united as one American family. We were also united in our resolve to protect our nation, and to bring, to bring those who committed this vicious attack to justice. We click, quickly learned that the 9-11 attacks were carried out by Al-Qaeda, an organization headed by Osama bin Laden, which had openly declared war on the United States and was committed to killing innocents in our country and around the globe. And so we went to war against Al-Qaeda to protect our citizens, our friends, and our allies. Over the last 10 years, thanks to the tireless and heroic work of our military and our counterterrorism professionals, we've made great strides in that effort. We've disrupted terrorist attacks and strengthened our homeland defense. In Afghanistan, we removed the Taliban government, which had given bin Laden and al-Qaeda safe haven and support. And around the globe, we worked with our friends and allies to capture or kill scores of al-Qaeda terrorists, including several who were a part of the 9-11 plot. Yet Osama bin Laden avoided capture and escaped across the Afghan border into Pakistan. Meanwhile, Al-Qaeda continued to operate from along that border and operate through its affiliates across the world. And so shortly after taking office, I directed Leon Panetta, the director of the CIA, to make the killing or capture of bin Laden the top priority of our war against Al-Qaeda even as we continued our broader efforts to disrupt, dismantle, and defeat his network. Then, last August, 
after years of painstaking work by our intelligence community. I was briefed on a possible lead to bin Laden. It was far from certain, and it took many months to run this thread to ground. I met repeatedly with my national security team as we developed more information about the possibility that we had located bin Laden hiding within a compound deep inside Pakistan. And finally, last week, I determined that we had enough intelligence to take action and authorized an operation to get Osama bin Laden and bring him to justice. Today, at my direction, the United States launched a targeted operation against that compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. A small team of Americans carried out the operation with extraordinary courage and capability. No Americans were harmed. They took care to avoid civilian casualties. After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. For over two decades, bin Laden has been al-Qaeda's leader and symbol, and has continued to plot attacks against our country and our friends and allies. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. Yet his death does not mark the end of our effort. There is no doubt that al-Qaeda will continue to pursue attacks against us. We must and we will remain vigilant at home and abroad. As we do, we must also reaffirm that the United States is not and never will be at war with Islam. I've made clear, just as President Bush did shortly after 9-11, that our war is not against Islam because bin Laden was not a Muslim leader. He was a mass murderer of Muslims. Indeed, Al-Qaeda has slaughtered scores of Muslims in many countries, including our own. So his demise should be welcomed by all who believe in peace and human dignity. Over the years, I've repeatedly made clear that we would take action within Pakistan if we knew where bin Laden was. That is what we've done. But it's important to note that our counterterrorism cooperation with Pakistan helped lead us to bin Laden and the compound where he was hiding. Indeed, bin Laden had declared war against Pakistan as well and ordered attacks against the Pakistani people. Tonight, I called President Zardari, and my team has also spoken with their Pakistani counterparts. They agree that this is a good and historic day for both of our nations. And going forward, it is essential that Pakistan continue to join us in the fight against al-Qaeda and its affiliates. The American people did not choose this fight. It came to our shores and started with the senseless slaughter of our citizens. After nearly 10 years of service, struggle, and sacrifice, we know well the costs of war. These efforts weigh on me every time I, as Commander-in-Chief, have to sign a letter to a family that has lost a loved one, or look into the eyes of a service member who's been gravely wounded. So Americans understand the costs of war. Yet, as a country, we will never tolerate our security being threatened, nor stand idly by when our people have been killed. We will be relentless in defense of our citizens and our friends and allies. We will be true to the values that make us who we are. And on nights like this one, we can say to those families who have lost loved ones to al-Qaeda's terror, justice has been done. Tonight, we give thanks to the countless intelligence and counterterrorism professionals who've worked tirelessly to achieve this outcome. The American people do not see their work nor know their names, but tonight they feel the satisfaction of their work and the result of their pursuit of justice. We give thanks for the men who carried out this operation, for they exemplify the professionalism, patriotism, and unparalleled courage of those who serve our country and they are part of a generation that has borne the heaviest share of the burden since that September day. Finally, let me say to the families who lost loved ones on 9-11 that we have never forgotten your loss, nor wavered in our commitment to see that we do whatever it takes to prevent another attack on our shores. And tonight, let us think back to the sense of unity that prevailed on 9-11. I know that it has at times frayed. Yet today's achievement is a testament to the greatness of our country and the determination of the American people. 
The cause of securing our country is not complete, but tonight we are once again reminded that America can do whatever we set our mind to. That is the story of our history. Whether it's the pursuit of prosperity for our people or the struggle for equality for all our citizens, our commitment to stand up for our values abroad, and our sacrifices to make the world a safer place. Let us remember that we can do these things not just because of wealth or power, but because of who we are. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, may God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Now, as soon as I heard that, right, my nightmare began, right, because I knew, right, that the uh, gloves were off and the next move had to be to get my donor extracted from Pakistan, okay, as well as all the other operatives, right, from all the countries around the world, okay, that were in Pakistan on that day. Right, and then as I went through in the earlier episode, right, and I don't mind talking about it again. Right, well, God blimey. Anyway, I spoke to her brother that day. Right, and he's um he said he hadn't heard anything. So then I opened up my Skype account, right, that I had with her, my Donna. Right, and I'm, I typed in, "Are you all right? Are you safe?" Right, and I heard nothing. Right, and it's on, and I've left it, I left it open all day. <clears throat> and then, all of a sudden, right, I've got a message come through from her, from my donna in Pakistan, on the day, right, Osama bin Laden has been killed, right, 11 years ago today, May the 2nd. So she's got back to me, right, it's okay, I'm safe. Right, so the next thing I hear, right, is what actually happened. Right, she was doing her NGO stuff, you know, what they do for NGOs, right, whether it was MI6 or CIA or Mossad, right, or any of them, the French secrets, uh, whatever they do, them NGOs, right. And the task she was set on that day, right, the day that Osama bin Laden was killed, right, she carried it out with uh, sterling quality and done it right to the letter of what she'd been trained to do, Right, and just so happens that she was in, right, Abbotsford or whatever it's called, right, you know me, I butcher names, Abbot, Abbotsbad or something, right, and you know Osama bin Laden, he was living in that compound, right, next to a military college, he was there, right, with the um, blessing of the ISI, the Secret Service in Pakistan, they're playing both ends against the middle, right, the Pakistanis, right, they're walking the fine line, okay, and he was there, hidden there. Anyway, right, so she happened to just be um, in the area, right, as a lookout, I suppose. Well, I don't know, she might have been having a bit of curry or something. Heard there was a nice chicken tikka masala up in Abbotsford. Anyway, she happened to be there. Boom, so now she's got to be extracted. So what happens, right, clever, right, she remembers her training and she makes her way to a friendly Pakistani colonel. So you got to remember, right, they're not all on Al-Qaeda's side, right? Some are genuinely on the west side, right, on the side of the west. So she makes her way to a Pakistani colonel's house, okay? And then he calls, right, the CIA station chief, right, in Abbotsford or whatever it was, right? Abadabad, I think it's called here. Yeah, I think I've got the name. Abadabad, right? You know what I mean? So anyway, right, she's there, and then all of a sudden, right, into his house, right, he's a colonel, right, so he ain't got a little cherry there, he's got a nice house. <clears throat> anyway, she drives him, right, the CIA station chief, right, in one of them suburban blacked out motors, right, you know, you see them, don't you, right, um, that the uh, the uh, Department of State use, you know, when they go on them big, you know, the, anyway, them big um, GMs, I think they are, right, she pulls in. Right, the door opens, right, and, and there's this great big huge blonde woman, right, who's the CIA station chief, right, she says to Madonna, she says, get in, right, so she gets in and she says, get down on the floor, close the door, right, and Madonna said she drove like a lunatic, right, through the streets, right, she couldn't see, but she could feel, 
like they were going like 100 miles an hour. Next thing, they come to a skidding halt, right, in the CIA station. Now, yeah, the gates are closed, right? Anyway, I open the door, out my Donna gets, and she goes in, right? And then she's met by all loads of other different operatives from different countries. Because what happened, right, the minute that um, Osama bin Laden was killed, all the people are all over the country, right? They were swarming, right, Western agents, right, all over Pakistan, Abbotsford and all that. So you can imagine, right, now they've all got to get out of the country. Okay, right, and Madonna was caught up in this, right? So anyway, she's at the CIA station, right? Boom. Anyway, magic manages, right, to get to the airport and gets out of the country and gets back to the UK. Well, I can't tell you the relief, right? Now, we've had to keep, the, you know, kept the st story secret, right? It's 11 years later, right? So it doesn't matter anyway. And then what she did, right, she came home, obviously debriefed, you know what I mean? And then went to work in London, right, for a, another NGO, but like in the UK, right? And then she applied, right, for a job. Well, no, she got a placement, that was it, right? She got a placement, right, in um, Switzerland, right, at some top, top company. Went there, worked really hard, right, re really hard, okay, right, and impressed them all, right? And then a year later... Right, um, there was a top, top executive analyst job came up in this global company, right? I'm telling you, global company. And she went for the interview. Well, there was about three or four interviews, right? And it took her, uh, the interviews were six and eight hours long. Anyway, after it's all whittled down anyway, she gets the job, right? You won't believe it, right? Starting pay, right, minimum, 150,000 euros, Right, and then all the exes of, of you know living and all that game, right? So she works through anyway. Right, then boom. Right, she then starts taking up a sport in in Switzerland, right? And she meets she meets an instructor. Right, and they click, right, and they get on and all that start going out, right? And you won't believe, right? E right works for the French uh, sorry, E works for a European um secret service. Right, yeah, about that, right? He's an instructor by day, right? And he works... So, you know, they move in them circles, don't they? You know, if you're a lawyer, you meet other lawyers, don't you? And I suppose if you're, like, the spy who loved me, right? You know, um, you meet other spies, right? Well, you know, we've we seen the things, haven't we? With all that homeland and that, you know, carry and all that stuff, right? But that's the world they're moving. Anyway, so they get together and it's all beautiful and lovely, right? And then bringing the story up to date a little bit, right? Well... They get married, right, and it's all lovely, right? And now they live at the bottom of a mountain, right, in Switzerland. Um, and I think they've given up um, all the um, spy game, right? But you never, you never give up all that game, do you, right? It's like the Hotel California, isn't it? Like once you're in, you can't check out, right? So anyway, they got day jobs, right? They're both instructors in this sport, right, in Switzerland. I'm not going to say what the sport is, right, but you know. You might be out of guess, right? But yeah, anyway. Right, so instructors by day, right? And spies are asked by night, I suppose. Right, and then their children, right? They're going to be like the Spy Kids. Remember that film, Spy Kids? With him, right? Banderas, him, you know. Um, uh, and they were Spy Kids. It was a kid's film, wasn't it? Hey, right, yeah, well, their kids are going to be like that, aren't they? Because mum and dad are spies. <laughs> right, anyway. I know I'm only joking, right? But this, right, is 11 years since this happened, right? And it's unbelievable um, to tell the story and to relive it, right? And it just shows you, doesn't it, eh, right? You know, um, so I just wanted to commemorate that, right? You know, 11 years ago, right, Madonna, she's in, she's in Pakistan, right? Down the street from where they killed Osama bin Laden. And then it all goes around the world, because no one knew what the reaction was going to be, whether everyone was going to go potty, right, and all this carry on. Right, and there was death threats and that, and I've got even, I've got death threats about it, right? You know, you're saying nasty things about um, the blessed Osama and all that, yeah, from them lunatics, right? Well, yeah. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. And then as you go on, right, you know what I mean? And it's nice to see, isn't it? You know what I mean? To reflect back, and then you go through... Right, and now we are, 11 years later, right, well, right, something even bigger than the Osama thing could be happening on a personal point of view, right, well, I'm not going to talk about that, 
we'll talk about it in the summer, right? I, what I'll do is I'll give you a little bit of the backstory of what's happened. Right, deep breath now. You've got to do the breaths now and I have to walk up and down, right? And you know that film, what is it, 101 Dalmatians, right? When when that woman, she's running around, the puppies are here, the puppies are here. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I feel like. I'm on edge now, you know what I mean? Right, keep looking at my watch. Anyway, right, well, Art Hostage, right? This is episode 81, right? Osama bin Laden killed, right? We're going to call it episode 81. President Obama announces that Osama bin Laden, right, was killed. And Mardonna was right in the middle of it in Pakistan. Okay? Right, yeah, just to remind you, anyway, right, a little 20-minute one, right? Right, and we're sending all the love in the world out, right, you know what I mean? And all the support. And we're standing shoulder to shoulder, like we did with the Americans, right? And at this point in time, especially through May, right, we're going to all stand shoulder to shoulder. Right, with Madonna, right, because she's got some things that are happening, right, unbelievable, the most beautiful things in the world, anyway, right, I'm not going to, God dear, I've got to watch myself all the time, right, but anyway, Art Hostage, signing off, episode 81, President Obama announces Osama Bin Laden had been killed 11 years ago today. <laughs>